Donald Trump would never have won the Republican Party nomination ticket, let alone the presidency in the general election of 2016, if the white Christian faction of the conservative wing did not overwhelmingly support his bid. Yet, the marriage between these two forces is downright unimaginable. Trump's life experience, his history and policy debates, and his lack of knowledge of Christian heritage and dogma led many to believe that he would not receive the backing of major pastors and other evangelical leaders. Keep watching and I'll explain the decades-long history of why white Christians grew to increasingly embrace the politics of white nationalism with Trump as a talismanic strongman who could fuse the two ideologies in order to save the nation. My name is Bhavan, and in this episode of Books in 5, we review Unholy by Sarah Posner. We trust Sarah because she is an investigative reporter currently with Type Investigations. This book uncovers the answers to a question that has puzzled politicians and officials from both the Democratic and Republican Party and scholars and media commentators alike. Why does Donald Trump receive such extensive approval from white evangelicals when he seems to have defied Christian values throughout his life? There is a long tradition of white Christians in America publicly utilizing their faith and values as core political motivations in order to win votes and occupy positions of power. The main goal is to roll back civil and democratic rights because they view the changing nature of America's demographics as a threat to a white Christian nation. The author details how these right-wing religious groups have always been in a coalition with other xenophobic and racist factions, and they have now struck a bargain with Trump in order to maintain their grip on political power. There has been a profound shift in the makeup of the American population in the post-World War II era, with the author bringing forward these numbers to help us fully recognize the nature of the relationship between Trump and white evangelicals. In 2006, they made up 23% of adults in the country, but this has dropped by 6% a short decade later for two major reasons. First, millions of Americans are increasingly becoming unaffiliated with any religion, with people leaving Christian churches in droves. Second, a rising proportion of non-white people are now voting citizens, owing to both increasing immigration numbers and a decreasing birth rate for white people. Combined with a demographic change, America has experienced a gradual but consistent liberalization of its political culture, leading to major policy and legislative changes over the past half century. The historically disenfranchised, including women, minorities, and LGBTQ people, have gained at the expense of eroding the dominance of white conservatives. The book details why the magnitude of this transformation has caused tremendous anxiety amongst evangelicals. They view this development as a loss of political power, which explains why 81% of them voted for Trump and why 71% of them approve of his job performance. The book describes, beginning in the 1970s, the numerous evangelical organizations such as the Council of National Policy and the pastors who have shepherded their flocks like Robert Jeffress and Jerry Falwell have become more political. Evangelicals had been disappointed with those they supported in the past. Even though Reagan and the Bushes both spoke at length about their Christian values, this did not translate into policy changes. Christians are used to charismatic leaders, and they view the boisterous and bombastic Trump as one of them. They view him as a leader anointed by God to save them from a politically correct society that is harming Christianity. A political development of utmost importance in the Trump era is the alliance between white supremacist groups and white evangelicals, as they both realized he was the strongman they were looking for to push back against a governing ideology that was increasingly secular, tolerant, and multicultural. The author analyzes how moderate Christians and heads of churches have been marginalized as the loud minority of alt-right voices in both the mainstream media and online have served as shock troops to radicalize the rest of the religious faithful. This is an important book as it showcases how democracy is being subverted by a religious group looking to demolish the boundary between church and state. I highly recommend that you read this.